Hello everyone. This video is primarily meant for those students who are currently in 10 plus 2, especially who are just going from 11th to 12th. But my hope is that, that some of the general things that I'm going to discuss here are also going to be useful for students at the more advanced level. That means students who are currently in on the undergraduate level or even at the master's level. So what am I going to focus on? Revision. So whether uh, your preparation is good or your preparation is not that great, revision is something which you definitely have to do and you have to continue to do it as time progresses. Now consider some of the things that you may be doing as part of your revision. You may be going over the chapters again and again or you may be solving some or you may be uh, solving some problems from the previous chapters again or you may perhaps in order to uh, save some time you may be going through the solved examples. In some uh, cases you may also be giving some kind of mock test to test yourself on how well uh, you have you are prepared uh, in those previous chapters. Now none of these things are wrong in themselves they are all good but what I want to say here is that perhaps you are approaching these methods in a way which is perhaps not the best use of your time. Uh, what do I mean by that? You see, as time progresses, the amount of chapters, the, the number of chapters that you have covered, the number of topics that you have covered, that keeps on increasing. Now, if you adopt an inefficient method of revising them, the amount of time that you have to spend in revision, that is going to increase with time. That is going to increase very much with time. So, if you have been spending, let's say, six hours, seven hours a day for your studies, for your studies of studying the new chapters. On, on top of that, you have to study the, you have to revise the previous chapters uh, in a sort of inefficient way. Then overall, your study time goes up, maybe from six to eight hours to something like eight to ten hours. And as the time progresses, more number of chapters are there. So you have your, your uh, I mean the entire preparation time keeps on increasing. Now you may say that, okay, I mean, uh, the new things that I have to study, that also keeps decreasing. But you see the variety of problems that you have to do, that also keeps on increasing. And as time progresses, mind you, that you have to go for more and more advanced level of problems, which will demand uh, more time from you. So my feeling is that uh, it is better to approach this in a very efficient way. And in this video, I'm going to just discuss the, just that. Why should you listen to you? Uh, why should you listen to me? So uh, let me introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. My name is Jeevan Jyoti Chakraborty. I am an associate professor in the mechanical engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. So I do have experience in uh, teaching students, uh, not at the preparatory level, uh, not at the entrance examination level, but certainly undergraduate students and master students and handling PhD students. But that is not the reason why you should listen to me. Okay, it's not for that experience. You should listen to me because I was once a student like you and I had made some very bad mistakes and for which I paid a very heavy price of having had to drop uh, a year for my JE preparation. So I was not able to clear JE in my first attempt. I was only able to clear it in my second attempt. And some of the things which I learned by making mistakes, my hope is that by transmitting this knowledge to you through this video, you will not make the same mistakes that I did so that you don't have to pay the price that I did of dropping. So uh, let's get on with the video. What do I want to say here? So see, uh, revising the chapters, uh, just going through the chapters again and again, just reading through them is not the most efficient way of revising things. In general, this is not the most like reading through the chapters is not the most efficient way of revising things. Studies have been made about this and uh, people have established it through proper studies that if you just go through the chapters, if you just read them, it is not going to, uh, I mean, etch, your, uh, etch the things permanently in your memory. So you have to have some kind of an active recall, like some kind of a proper retrieval of the things through which is in an, in an effortful way. So the... Um, one way of doing this, of course, is to again solve some of the unseen problems from the previous chapters, the unsolved problems from the previous chapters. But an even better way is to give mock tests. Now, this is something which is uh, 
rarely followed by the students. It is definitely followed by some students, but the usual case is that it is not followed. So the tests themselves can be a wonderful way of revising the chapters, the previous chapters. What do I mean by that? You see, when you sit for a mock test, definitely there will be some questions on which you will not be able to sink your teeth at all. There will be some questions on which you almost know that, that you know that you almost know the concept, that you almost can solve it, but then there is a little bit of a missing link because of which you are not able to solve it. So during the test, you, of course, you cannot, I mean, uh, if you're being honest with yourself, you cannot do anything about it. But my suggestion is that hold on to that feeling. This is very, very important. Hold on to that feeling. Okay. And don't just treat the mock test like only a test to check how much you can score in a test like environment. That is certainly a purpose of the mock test, but that is not the sole. Don't, don't use it solely for that. So after the test is over, that is when your main utility or your main game of utilizing the mock test begins. What can you do? So remember, I told you to hold on to that feeling of just not knowing something, just forgetting something. Go back to the questions, go through them again. Try to remember those feelings that you had when you were in the pressure cooker situation of solving the question. What was it that you were not able to recall? What was it that was like a missing link in your brain because of which you were not able to solve the problem? Make a note of that. When I say make a note of that, I don't just say, I don't just mean it in a very unsystematic way that you just keep it in your mind and then go about uh, doing the next thing. No, make actual note of it, okay, in a, on a piece of paper and then go about attacking those things which are the missing links. So in a very pinpointed way, go back to your notes, go back to the textbook, go back to the, whatever the training material that you have been using and in a very pinpointed fashion, try to relearn those things which you had not been able to recall at all. Try to go back and take a relook at those concepts which were like a missing link when you were not able to solve the problem. It might also have been the case during the examination that uh, a problem had come which you had not been able to solve, but you had, you remembered very well that you had done something like this somewhere before. Try to dig up that material. Try to go through that solved example without looking at the solution preferably and if you're short on really short on time uh, take a look at the solution but in a very active fashion trying to understand what was it that you had perhaps not understood as well as you had thought you had understood and try to understand it again so in a very very active way try to attack your loopholes your shortcomings this is what i mean that you have to utilize your mock test as a tool for revision. See, many people will say many things that you have to revise in such and such a fashion. There are also theories about active recall, spaced repetition. If you look up how to revise on YouTube, you will get so many videos about how to do this, how to do that. There, are, there have been books written by proper experts on how to do revision. But at the end of the day, your revision is your very personal thing. Okay, so at the very beginning of the preparation, everyone starts on a blank slate. There is not much difference between the brains of the different students. But as time goes on, because of whatever reasons, the brain that is sculpted, the, the, the content in the brain of the different students that is sculpted along the way, that becomes completely different in different students' minds. So it is absolutely essential that you as an individual student, you do the things which are necessary for absolutely you and not which is being dictated in a very general fashion by others. Others, I mean, they, may, they might be absolutely well wishes of you. They might be your coaching teachers. They might be your school teachers. They might be your best friends who are preparing along with you. But even then, ultimately at the end of the day, the question paper which will be there in front of you and you will be alone together. And your preparation is your preparation. So whatever the shortcomings are there in your preparation, you have to very pinpointedly address them. And that is what is exposed. The shortcomings are exposed through the mock test. And so it is imperative, absolutely imperative upon you that you
pick up the clues that the mock tests are giving you and you work on those clues. The clues that are telling you that, okay, you have this shortcoming, you have that shortcoming, you have forgotten this, you have not understood this. And it is absolutely essential. It is absolutely essential that you are being completely, completely honest with you. This is the like the bedrock of all your preparation. Okay, so at the time of revision, see when you are when you are when you are learning something, it is possible that in a in an innocent way you misunderstand something or you do not understand something, and then you still go forward. But at the time of the mock test. When it is giving you a clue that you have not understood something, you have to be absolutely honest with yourself. Okay, there you cannot hide behind any mis I mean misconception. Okay, so uh, my suggestion is that okay, you may not be the greatest of problem solvers. Yeah, you may not be the greatest of students. Accept that fact. But if you have given a mock test. And if you have stumbled across a question, prepare after the mock test in such a fashion on that question and the related concepts that if something comes like that, there is nobody on earth who can stop you from answering that question. This is, I mean, if there is one heart and soul for this of this video, of the, of the advices that I'm giving in this video, it is this, that once you have done something, once you have stumbled across something, so, I mean, guarantee to yourself that you are never ever going to stumble uh, across that, that type of question or something related ever again. Okay, so this is my urgent, urgent advice to you. Finally, I would like to say something regarding memorization. So, as part of your revision, it is extremely important that you reinforce your memories. Now, uh, there are certain things on in which uh, you have to solve problems for example in mathematics in physics but there are certain uh, i mean where you have to do the revisions through problem solving uh, there is not not much that you can do by just uh, just reading or understanding the concepts that doesn't really take you anywhere but uh, for revision purposes especially in subjects like inorganic chemistry to a certain extent even in organic chemistry uh, and uh, although I did not study it myself I imagine it is also true in biology for those of you who are preparing for NEET uh, so for subjects like this there is a lot and lot to memorize and please do not uh, ever think of memorization as a bad word okay conceptual understanding is fine honing your problem solving skills is fine but you have to have to remember certain things there is no going past it you have to accept the fact that you have to memorize certain things of course you have to understand the reactions you have to understand the background of those reactions especially in organic chemistry to a certain extent also in inorganic chemistry but you have to ultimately remember the things some of the basic facts some of some maybe even some of the advanced things you have to remember those so there is no harm i mean you are not don't think that you are too cool to memorize things what i mean by that so and even if you laugh at it i'm going to say it so see um, people um, say very bad things about road memorization in my mind even though i'm now a professor uh, I don't think it is necessarily a bad thing. It is bad when people use it for the wrong things. So if you're using rote memorization for things like mathematics and uh, for mechanics problems, then it is a serious problem. But if you're using trying to use rote memorization, and when I say rote memorization, I mean, I mean by repeatedly, I mean repeating things to yourself and just trying to commit them to your memory. That is what I mean by rote memorization. So. I don't think there is any harm in in using that method of rote memorization of of actively committing something to memory through an effortful process uh, in subjects which do require your memory work so uh, as i said even though you're you're probably going to laugh at it i'm going to say this that for remembering the reactions the some of the methods that i mean one method that i personally used 
is that at night uh, before dinner or maybe after dinner i used to study maybe two pages three pages of reactions now our human brain is very good at forgetting things okay because life happens so many things happen during the day and our mind gets filled and filled with more new information so that the previous information either gets suppressed or it just evaporates i'm not using any technical language here i'm just using like a layman's language so what i did was within 24 hours i revised it again okay so that would reinforce whatever i had studied the previous night and i used to study something more and i also used to revise the things from the previous day from the previous night and then after a few days i would revise it again and after a few more days i would revise it again so multiple revisions now the thing that i'm going to say this is not the laughing part the laughing part is that even though i was then 18 years old 17 18 years old i would actually like read out the reactions with my mouth aloud okay and um, so just like a kid learns to recite poetry by reading out the words i used to read out the reactions aloud so this is something which which you may find funny some of you may think that it is an absolutely uncool way to do things but see whatever works okay so you may try this out uh, if you feel that uh, it is okay to be a little bit uncool so try it out read read out the reactions uh, pronounce the things with your mouth and hear them so there is a very nice connection between what what you say and what you hear and uh, that kind of it is my personal feeling i cannot give you any scientific study to back it up probably it is there i don't know but it worked for me that when i when you say something and when you hear it it creates a good strong connection in your brain and when you do that repeatedly um, spacing it out um, it kind of works so this is my suggestion you may try it out okay for certain things it it may work and um, please note that uh, there are certain things which we as teachers professors we are quite proficient in that is our job to be proficient in and uh, we have used those things so many times so there are a number of factors of why we become proficient in certain things because we have used them in uh, in so many different situations we keep on applying them we keep on teaching them but you see the i feel this the biggest reinforcement happens when we teach them in class and what do we do in class we actually pronounce the things we actually say it out loud so you guys are sitting in class listening to us you are not repeating after us okay like a kindergarten thing but we are saying it out the words so year after year when we say it out perhaps my feeling my feeling is that perhaps that creates a strong connection in our brain which also contributes to us getting more and more familiar and more and more the things getting more and more concretely reinforced in our brain so perhaps there is something to it uh, so you can try it out also if you have the luxury of sitting uh, of having a study room of your own uh, there is something you can try it out and probably your parents will also feel nice about it that uh, even their grown up child is um, is reading out aloud the things okay so with these suggestions i'll conclude this video so try it out make absolute use of your mock test in summary so make absolute use of your mock test as a revision tool and uh, try to actively uh, commit to things uh, commit things to memory especially in subjects like chemistry and biology so with this i'll end this video uh, if you have any suggestions or better methods or in which you are studying please feel free to mention in the comments so that's all for today thank you very much and all the very best to all of you